Your physical and emotional well-being are essential to your overall health. Captain April Elmore speaks with Dr. Charles Parker about a very taboo subject, suicide. Hello, we're here in the studio today with Dr. Parker. Dr. Hello. Parker, you are a psychiatrist? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and difference in psychiatrists and psychologists? Yep, psychologist doesn't write for meds, psychiatrist writes for meds, does the evaluation and writes for meds. Okay. So we do the whole biologic thing, not just the psychologic thing. Great segue. Um, part of what you were going to talk to us about today is looking at the whole body, looking at the whole person and making sure that everything, not just your mind, but everything as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about suicide. What are some things that maybe we should look for? Well, the first thing is we gotta, we're dealing with a bunch of warriors out there and we got to deal with the warrior code, okay? Okay. So what happens is recognizing it's kind of difficult. Uh, in my new book, which I'll tell about, I'll talk about later, the whole thing of, uh, I think we're treating thinking in the United States without thinking about thinking. That's an interesting thought. Very Don't deep. Want to, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's kind of deep. <laughs> but what happens is, in, in apropos of thinking about thinking, the Lone Ranger uh, Clint Eastwood depression is one that's frequently not recognized especially in the warrior crowd. So what is the Lone Ranger, Clint Eastwood? If you think of Gran Torino, High Plains Drifter, the good, the bad, and the ugly movies we all love, Clint in there is saying, I don't care. Do whatever you want to do. It doesn't make any difference to me. Okay. <laughs> okay now, when a person's saying that and they don't care, they're apathetic and indifferent, that is guy depression. Now, some women have it. We've seen women with it. But recognizing guy depression with an I don't care attitude, now, it doesn't mean everybody that, doesn't have an, that has an I don't care attitude is depressed, but it's something to think about in the warrior crowd. Because certain things should affect us all. Yeah, I mean, if Clint came off the movies and came to my office, I'd definitely give him some medication. <laughs> <laughs> but not before you checked him all, no, all over. We'd check the whole thing out. But, you know, if he, if he was in... You know, he, of course, he was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder from the Korean War and the whole thing. But anyway, the bottom line is he, he's treatable, and those kind of guys are treatable. It's interesting the way the movie ended from the point of view of depression. But anyway, the other thing I think is really important about suicide and depression is how we ask about it. We really need to have a way of thinking about it without asking the question, which is really so easily denied, have you ever thought about killing yourself? Like, the easy answer to that is no. Why? Because I'm not going to kill myself. So I recommend that we think whether it's the firefighter asking somebody on a scene or asking a colleague or a supervisor asking a firefighter the question. I recommend that we ask it in this particular way. Even though you wouldn't do it, have you ever had a thought cross your mind about seriously harming yourself? Now that's a whole different question than are you going to kill yourself? Because then we're again, as I was talking about previously, we're dealing with thinking about it, not just the whole business of would you do it. And as somebody, there are signs that we would recognize as a supervisor, as a, per, as a provider on the scene, there are certain things that we might pick up on that would tell us that, that this person isn't being truthful or that this person is being truthful and that we should pay close attention to this. Well, apathy and indifference is a big one. If somebody says, I'm thinking about it, then we, you know, that's my alarm button. That's my, if somebody's in the office and they tell me they're thinking about it, and I've had mothers cry because I asked an eight-year-old child that question that way, and the child hadn't told the mother that they were thinking about killing themselves every day. So if you frame it that way, it's sort of like coming in the back door instead of hitting on the front end, even though you wouldn't do it. Of course you wouldn't do it, but you ever think about it then you can evolve the conversation. And then what happens is, yeah, the issue is if it's in the context of not caring, looking morose, not doing the job, or somebody there on site who just feels like they're overwhelmed, then we need to do an intervention. And the way to do an intervention is to step up to the plate and connect with them. Okay. Ask the question. Okay, so sometimes we need to ask those hard questions. And this is true not just with people that we encounter as providers. This is true of fire service personnel, EMS workers, police workers. Watching out for each other is a big part of that. It really is. I mean, there's a team out there, but what happens is because people don't want to be considered to be a psych patient, <laughs> then the question doesn't get asked. 
with the results sometimes catastrophic because they never ask the question. They look at the options that are available. A lot of good options available. You don't have to be weird to actually talk to somebody in the mental health field. Just like you would get your heart fixed, you're going to get your, your mind right. That's it. Just walk in the door. No okay. problem. All right. Thank you very much. Thank this you, is Dr. Man. Parker. This is the first in a three-part series that we'll be talking about some specifics to deal with public safety.